bless you. Isaiah 40, the 20th, 20th verse, and you're hearing, have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faint nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I've read Isaiah 40, 28 through the 31st verse. May the Lord bless the readers here and the doers of his word. Come on, somebody give the Lord a praise in the room. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, it's time to pray. It's time to pray. It's time to go before the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your unmerited favor. Thank you, God, for another opportunity time to come into your power. So, God, to give you praise, to give you glory, and to give you honor. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for the spirit of this convocation. We thank you, O oh God, for your spirit that has rest, rested here all week long. And, Father, today we expect nothing less. Oh, Father, we ask your oh God to take us to a new place, O oh God. Take us to another place in your glory and in your anointing, oh God. Let the spirit of the living God 
Paul fresh in this house this morning. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your anointing, oh God. Father, we ask you, oh God, oh God, to come in the midst of us this morning. Oh God, we ask you, oh God, to send your Shekinah glory in this house in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, oh God, that we shall praise your name. We shall give you the glory and we shall give you the honor for you are God. And besides you, there is no other God. Father, we thank you, O God, O God, for our chief apostle today. Continue to strengthen his body now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we ask your God to strengthen our board of bishops today in the name of Jesus. But Father, most of all, we ask your God to shake this place. Shake this place with your glory. Shake this place with your honor, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, somebody came in here that needs to be healed. Somebody came in here that needs to be delivered. But Father, we're calling on your name, asking you to touch us one more time. Father, we ask your God to lay your hand on us this morning, oh, in the name of Jesus. Huh? Father, we thank you, oh God, huh, for what you're getting ready to do. Huh? We thank you for your power huh, that shall be revealed huh, in the name of Jesus. Huh? Send your glory. Huh, in the house today in the name of Jesus uh, somebody needs to be healed this morning somebody needs to be delivered and father we ask your oh God to breathe on us oh God one more time in the name of Jesus we thank you for the reset we thank you for the reset uh, we thank you for being revived uh, we thank you for being restored uh, in the name of Jesus uh, blow in this house uh, Breathe in this house huh? in the name of Jesus. Huh? We're calling on you. Huh? We're looking unto you, God. Huh? The author and finish of our faith. Huh? And when it's done and said, huh? we'll say that you did it. And to God be the glory. Somebody clap your hands in here and tell God, thank you. Praise the Lord. Our national praise and worship team is coming before you. God bless you. Come on, clap your hands and give our God great praise. It's 1240 in the afternoon. I know you can do better than that. Open up your mouth. Come on, give the Lord praise in this room. He's worthy. Somebody shout, I'll lift up your name. Come on, shout, I will lift up your name. Come on, shout, I will lift up your name. Clap those hands. Come on, hey.
Chapter number four, verse number 10. Hallelujah to Jesus. It says, The 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy. Our Lord and God to receive glory, come on, 
and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being. Somebody shout, he's worthy. worthy. Come on, lift those hands and say he's worthy. worthy. Hallelujah. Just begin to speak well of him in this room. Come on, we know him. We need no introduction. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's worthy of glory. Come on, extend it to him. He's worthy of honor. Come on. He's worthy of praise. God, we come to magnify you. Come on, y'all. God, we come to glorify you. We lift you in this room. Hallelujah. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Can we lift that in this room? Come on, everybody lift it up and say, you're worthy. You're worthy of it all. Come on, lift those hands and tell the Lord he's worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy of it all. Oh, for from you are all things, Lord Jesus. For from you. a worshiper to find her too. Come on. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy of oh, the Lord. We give it to you, God. You're so worthy. You're so worthy. You're worthy of the Lord. Oh, for from you are, for from you are all things. For from you are all things. To you are all things. And to you
remember what he did for you? That's love. But that's not how the story ends. For in three days, he rose again. That's love, that's love. I got to remind you, that's love. Come on, say. sustainer he's a provider he's a way maker he's a miracle worker he's a promise keeper he's God if that's not enough I don't know what is he's God and he's God alone say you deserve the glory oh you deserve the glory you do you deserve the glory say you deserve the glory you deserve the glory say you deserve the glory oh you deserve the glory thank you jesus come on I know somebody out there can think of just one thing that the Lord has done for you. Glory to God that he deserves the glory over. Is there just one thing that you can glorify God over? Just think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you. Your soul ought to cry out hallelujah. You deserve the glory Lord. You woke me up this morning. Brand new mercies every day. You spared my life to see another day. You deserve it, Lord. You deserve it, Lord. You deserve it, Lord. You deserve it, Lord. I don't understand. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. We can sit in front of a game and just cheer for our favorite team, but we come to the house of the Lord and we forget what he's done for us. Hallelujah. He keeps blessing us over and over. Hallelujah. Over and over and over. Over and over and over. Over and over and over and over. He deserves the glory. He deserves the honor. He deserves the praise. Hallelujah. 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 Some of us, he just spared us from accidents and incidents. He brought us over the skyways. Over the highways and byways. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You deserve the glory. You deserve the honor. Oh. 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 oh, oh, oh. You deserve it. You deserve it. our chief apostle and the quorum of bishops coming in hallelujah hallelujah glory to God hallelujah you give God and to God for our chief apostle Alan A. Simmons being with us by his side lady judge Janice Y. Simmons hallelujah glory to God hallelujah glory to God our bishop Mary Helen Taylor Bishop Geraldine Rouse, B Bishop Gilbert T. Rouse, <laughs> Bishop Lincoln Wright, hallelujah, glory to God, Bishop Medlock, First Lady Medlock, I'm trying real hard, amen, glory to our guests for this evening, amen, glory to God, hallelujah, I know there's some more bishops I didn't call out, hallelujah, each and every one, my I'm getting old in my senior moment. Hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah. You all will not guess how old I am not telling it today. Hallelujah, glory to God. We're having our opportunity to prosper. Amen, glory to God. Bishop Lincoln Wright is in the building. I don't see Bishop designate Alan A. Simmons, but Bishop Wright, Lincoln Wright is here, and we're going to come, have him come before you for our opportunity to prosper. Come on and give the Lord a hand praise for this opportunity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise God in advance. Because we, we about to show in the ministry. And let's praise him in advance for the blessing that's going to come afterwards. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of people are looking for money in return. But look at your neighbor and say, I'm praising him. For good health. I'm praising him for a huge return. I'm praising him to receive stuff that money can't buy. Oh, yes, sir. Come on and give the devil a headache. Hallelujah. And give God a hand praise. Come on, give the devil a headache. When you clap your hands, that hurts his ears because it lets the devil know that in spite of what I came through, I'm still here. Look at your neighbors and we're still here. In the middle of everything that we've come through, look at somebody and say, you don't know what it took to me to get here. You don't know who I had to come through to get here. You don't know who I had to climb over. But I'm here. And I'm ready to prosper. I'm ready to give. I'm ready. Anybody excited to give? 
Look how y'all looking. You excited? I'm excited. I'm excited. Come on, I'm excited. Come on, it's. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Just ran back and said, God, about to reset my giving. He said, reset my giving. I used to give a dollar. Now I'm going to give 20. I used to give 20. Now I'm going to give 50. I used to give 100. Now I'm going to give two. Ran back and said, reset. Reset my given. All right. All right, we're going to do this real quickly. We're going to ask all of our bishops, all of our bishops to please give us $50, please. Sir, please, ma'am, give us $50, and we're going to ask everybody, all of our convocation delegates, to please give us $20. Amen. Twenty dollars. Is that all right? Is that all right? That's all right. Thank you. We'll we'll call. We'll, we'll respond and call church. Call and respond church. Amen. 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 So we're going to ask you to do this in Jesus' name. We're going to ask everybody in these aisles to stand. Please, everybody stand. Everybody stand. Everybody stand. Everybody stand. Bishop, I ain't got no money. Well, that's okay. Come up here anyway. Don't let nobody walk over you. You've been walked over long enough. Amen. 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 Everybody stand. Everybody stand. If you walked in here, let us all stand. We're going to ask these two sections to face this aisle. These two sections to face this aisle. Amen. And we're going to ask our ushers. Our ushers are going to lead you out from the rear. Amen. And we do have cash app. All of you. Oh, we do have cash app. All of our ways of giving. Amen. Please look at the monitors. Look at the screens. Amen. Our cash app is, as our chief apostle has highlighted, dollar sign, S-O-P-P-F-M. Amen. Please, let's do that in Jesus' name. Is that all right? Amen. All right. Our musicians are going to give us some good given marching music. Thank you so much for your opportunity to prosper. Ushers, it's in your hands. It's in your hands. It's in your hands. Please, please, make sure, make sure you make your checks out to S-O-P-P-F-M. Please. Make your checks out to S O P P F M. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Father God, we thank you for all the gifts that we have received. We thank you, O oh God, for those who had to give. God, if there's anybody here that just did not have anything to give, we ask your God to bless them. Oh God, that they might be able to give on the next time. But help us, God. We thank you for helping us, oh God, to receive these gifts that we might further the gospel and further the kingdom work. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are we ready for some word? Hallelujah. Are we ready, ready to take our forks and knives out and eat this morning? Hallelujah. Are you ready to eat of the word? Hallelujah. Anybody hungry? Hallelujah. Anybody hungry for the word of God? Hallelujah. Anybody hungry for the word of God? Anybody hungry for the word of God? Come on and clap your hands. Let's give him glory. Come on and clap your hands and magnify the Lord. He is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste. Hallelujah. He's sweeter than the honey. We have Pastor Alexis Benoit, hallelujah, introducing. After that, our sermonic selection will be from the sounds of praise, mass choir, hallelujah, glory to God. And when you finish, glory to God with the choir, stand to your feet and receive Bishop Brandon Jacobs, glory to God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Bishop Brandon A. Jacob Sr. is the founder and pastor of New Zion Temple Church, organized December 14th, 2006. Bishop Jacobs was called into the gospel ministry at the age of nine and began preaching at age 13. He received his license at the Mount Hermon Missionary Baptist Church in East Chicago, Illinois, under the leadership of Reverend Andre McGee. In 2003, he received his ordination at the New Jerusalem Temple of the Living God in Marlton, New Jersey, under the leadership of Reverend Sharon R. Robinson, where he served as youth pastor from the year 2000 to 2004. Bishop Jacobs also served as interim pastor and associate minister of Mount Hermon Baptist Church in East Chicago, Illinois, from 2005 to 2006. New Zion Temple Church is an affiliate of Pilgrim Assemblies International, which he headquartered in New York under the leadership of presiding Archbishop William Hudson III. On July 8, 2016, Bishop Jacobs was one of the last two bishops consecrated under the leadership of the late Archbishop Roy E. Brown. Currently, Bishop Jacobs serves as the Midwest Regional Prelate of Pilgrim Assemblies International Incorporated. The Lord led Bishop Jacobs to open a second New Zion Temple Church location in Indianapolis, Indiana launched May 20th, 2017. In, in addition, 
to pastoring one church in two locations, Bishop Jacobs has provided oversight to the following services throughout the community. Counseling, youth advocacy, and senior support. On December 31st, 2016, Bishop Jacobs was installed as president of the Hammond Ministerial Alliance, Alliance which consists of several churches throughout the Hammond community. Bishop Jacobs worked as a recidivism director and counselor of Tri-City Alternative Action Program. He provided life skills training curriculum to troubled teens, counseling sessions, and implemented creative guidelines to prevent the behavior of repeat offenders. As a member of the Northwest Indiana Black Expo Youth Division, he was instrumental in awarding $15,000 in scholarships to youth in East Chicago, Hammond, and Gary, Indianapolis. Through God's inspiration, Bishop Jacobs wrote and published his first book titled, All Eyes on Me, Lifestyle of the Young and Saved. It is his desire that this book provides a guiding light for the many challenges our youth face today. Bishop Jacobs is married to the beautiful and anointed Lady Vivian Jacobs. They are the proud parents of five children. Lady Vivian Jacobs diligently serves alongside her husband and impels the vision he has for New Zion Temple Church. Bishop Jacobs is currently pursuing a Bachelor of Science degree in Biblical Studies at Moody Bible Institute in Chicago, Illinois. He believes his strong relationship with God sustains him and gives him the strength to better serve not only his congregation, but also the community at large. After the sermonic selection by the SOP Mass Choir, please stand and receive our charismatist for this afternoon, Bishop Jacobs. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can you stand up all over the building? Can you lift your hands and tell the Lord that you trust him, whatever his will is for your life? Give you glory, Jesus. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. For I will, yes, I will. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. For I will, yes, I will. Yes, I will, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. For I will, yes, I will. Sing, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you for I will I will you're the only one you're the only one I can you're the only one that I can you're the only one yes you are you are you're the only one you're the only one you're the only one that I need. You're the only one yeah, yeah, you are. You are. You are. You are. Say, I will, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. For I will. I will. Say, I will. Trust in you. I will. 
trust in you. I will trust in you. I will. I will. You're the only one. Said you. Count on, and you're the only one that I need every day of my life, Lord. You are, you are, say you're the only one I can count You're the only one, you're the only one that I You to come through for me. You're the only one yeah. You are. You are. You are. Say yes. Yeah. Trust in you. Trust in you. Yeah. 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 Count on you. Count on you. Yeah. Yeah. Trust in you. Trust in you. Yeah. If you trust the will of the Lord for your life, if you trust the will of the Lord for your life, lift up your voice and give the Lord glory. Yeah, you're the only one. You're the only one. Thank you. You're the only one. You're the only one. Thank you. You're the only one. In you. Trust in you, I will, I will trust in you, trust in you. for you are, you are, you are. You are. So I will, I will trust in you, trust in you, I will, I will trust in you, trust in you, I will, I will trust in you, for I will, I will, I will. You're the only one. Somebody ought to put your hands together and give him praise all over this building. Sound man, I would that you would help me. If you can help me sound like that, my 
that he had, I'd be happy. Amen. And my monitors, hallelujah, if you could fill me up, amen, up here on the stage. Glory to God. I've been preaching all, well, since last night, I'm going to say this week, and been on, on the plane all morning. I need all you can give me. Amen. On this stage. Amen. While he's doing that, can we clap our hands and give him praise? Oh, you could do a little better than that. Clap your hands and praise the name of our God. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run therein. And they are safe. Anybody glad to be saved? Sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. We honor, amen, uh, on this afternoon, our amazing prelate. Can we thank God, amen, for Apostle Simmons on today? We honor you, sir. We honor you, amen, and, and to our bishops, our presidium, we honor them, amen, on this afternoon. And to my friend and my brother who's been instrumental in me getting here. Can we thank God for Bishop Griffin? Hallelujah. Bless you, sir. Amen. Uh, so many familiar faces and pastors in the room. God bless all of you. It's good to see you. To my son on the organ. Amen. And to one of our... Amen. Amen. To uh, uh, you all stole one of my staff pastors who was at our church and she moved on back home but she's here today i thank god for elder Paquetta wings amen i love you i love you god bless you uh, so good to see you amen and i grew up i grew up on her music and it's just amazing to see her here amen sister natalie wilson god bless you so good to see you Amen. One of my favorite songs is Don't Let Hatred. Uh, oh, y'all know it, huh? Glory to God. It's a blessing to see her. Amen. On this, on this afternoon. Isn't God good? I'm going to try that again. Isn't God just good? Old church said he's just good, good, and good some more. Amen. And we thank him. We thank him for his goodness. I would that you would get your Bibles tonight as we get ready to get in the Word of God. I want you to meet me in Zechariah chapter 4. And I want to read down, amen, to verse number 7. Zechariah chapter 4. And we're going to read down to verse number 7. And while you're on your way there, Father, we praise you. God, I thank you for safe travel. I thank you for your grace and your mercy that has kept us on two planes getting here. And I thank you that, God, you saw us through the highway and the byway. I praise you, O oh God, that you have assigned us to this moment to declare the truth of your word. And Father, I pray that, God, you would have your way in this afternoon service. Shake this house in your glory. Do something that only you can do. Move man out of the way. I pray that, God, you will allow your glory to settle in this house like never before. And, Father, today I ask you to do what I ask you to do every time I stand. Preach me, Jesus. Preach me until revival hit this house. Preach me, oh God, until your glory collides with us. Oh God, and until something shake this house into another stratosphere. And, oh, rebebebebebe, oh, shout I pray that, God, you'll move us to another level. I pray that you'll take us to another dimension. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost settle in this house. And, Father, we'll give you the praise for it. We'll give you the glory for it. And we'll count it done. In the mighty name, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. All those in agreement said, amen. When you found Zechariah chapter 4, verses 1 through 7, signified by saying, Jesus... The Bible reads like this from the King James Version Bible says, And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is awakened out of his sleep and said unto me, What seest thou? And 
I said, I have looked and behold a candlestick of gold with a bowl upon the top of it. And his seven lamps thereon and seven pipes and seven lamps which are upon the top tier. And two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left side thereof. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest now what these things be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying grace, grace unto it. I want you to help me be very prophetic in announcing my title to your neighbor on today. And look at him real good, eyeball to eyeball, and say, neighbor, I want you to get ready because in this season you're in now, God is getting ready to help you complete a hard thing. Ooh, that nice. I need you to find you another neighbor because that neighbor is too cute. Look at him and say, neighbor, this season you're in right now. Tell him I want you to be encouraged. Because God is getting ready to help you complete a hard thing. If you know he's going to add that by shot. If you know he's getting ready to help you complete a hard thing. I tell you, throw your head back and give him a shout. Like you know the help of the Lord. Huh? He's going to help you complete a hard thing. I feel Jesus early. You are looking at somebody tell him it's already done. Hallelujah! Oh! Oh, yeah! Hallelujah! You take your seats because I'll praise him right there. Hey! Yandola Bohoshia! Is there anything too hard for God? Oh! Yeah. Right. Take your seats if you can. He's going to help you complete a hard thing. Jesus. Take your seat so we can make sense of this. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, my brothers and sisters, as we, I see you, Brother Jarrell, as we delve into this prophetic corpus of this book of Zechariah, it is it is Haya Hamdo Bohoshia Lord it feel like a night service to me Come on Hallelujah Oh yeah Take your seats if you can. I, I don't want them to say I didn't do my job. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. This, this prophetic corpus or book of Zechariah is so important and 
the reason it is so important is because you must understand that there would be no prophetic book of Zechariah without the prophetic life or prophetic book of Jeremiah. Before there is Zechariah, there is Jeremiah. And what makes the prophetic book of Jeremiah so important is that Jeremiah, he is prophesying in an hour to a group of people who are out of order. He's prophesying in an hour where there's a people who are wayward. These people don't want to follow after God and they don't want to do the things that the Lord has told them to do. In so much that phrase that we shout over and we often shout over it as if it is a phrase of victory and it somewhat is but it's more of a phrase of victory for Jeremiah more than it is a phrase of victory for the people of God. When Jeremiah says great is thou faithfulness the reason Jeremiah is saying that the Lord is faithful and he's great in his faithfulness is because Jeremiah is speaking prophetically to the people in Israel and he's telling them to get it together. He's telling them, get your lives right. Come out from amongst them. Put away your idols. Get rid of the stuff that is uh, uh, keeping you bound. And uh, he's so prophetic in this, in this hour uh, that he's one of the preachers that uh, the people really don't want to hear. He is not the famed evangelist. In so much when Jeremiah would get the mic in his hand, if you will, the people would get upset because Jeremiah was not speaking prophetic words of blessing. But he was often speaking prophetic words of judgment. Because he was speaking prophetic words of judgment, the people did not want to hear him. As a matter of fact, this is why the Lord tells him, be not afraid of their faces. Because he was prophesying and declaring the word of the Lord. And while he was speaking, the people were frowning. People did not like what he had to say. They were angry with the word he was given, uh, giving to the people of God. And so much he got discouraged and said to the Lord, you've lied to me. You, you've deceived me. That, that's what he says. He says, I, I thought I was being called to a great work. But you have deceived me into believing that the people would be for me and the people were against me. Uh, let me put this in your gumbo while I'm in your kitchen early and tell you preachers, you've got to be careful chasing the mic for a fan club. You've got to be careful chasing the mic for followers on social media because you've got to understand that sometimes God will call you to declare the word of God in an hour where people don't want to hear the truth. And if you are only preaching this thing so that people can like you, you better leave this now. Because one day they'll love you and the next day they'll hate you. One day they'll be following after you and the next day they will throw you away like a dirty dish rag. You can't be doing this for fans. You got to do this for God. And you got to be faithful to this. This is why Paul said you got to be instant in season and out of season because there's going to be a time where you're hot and they love you and there's going to be a time where they will do away with you but when you are called to this thing because of God you'll be like Jeremiah where Jeremiah said I wanted to give up I, I wanted to throw in the towel I wanted to call it over he says and just as I was running his word was like fire shut up in my bones and I know that we say that that fire was a fire of revival but when you study that in context it was really a fire of judgment and it was telling Jeremiah either you're going to do what God said do or you're going to go back and just give it up all together and it was the judgment of God that ran Jeremiah back to the pulpit to declare the word of God Jeremiah tells the people, he says, if you don't get it right that the Lord was going to put you in exile. And after the Lord told him that God was faithful to his word and he actually put the people in exile. When God put the people in exile, then Jeremiah declared, great is 
I, mm, mm, he he kept his word. He was he was he 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 kept his promise and he covered me in my ministry. But then Jeremiah tells them, he says, "You're only going to be in bondage for seventy years." He says, "You're not going to be in bondage a long time. You're only going to be there for seventy years." After he gives them this decree of seventy years, the Bible says that through the seventy years. Years, there's another prophet that comes on the rise and the prophet that comes on the rise his name is Zechariah what I love about Zechariah is that his name means that the Lord remembers the reason that's so powerful is because Jeremiah told the people of God you were going to be in bondage for 70 years not 65 years not 75 years not 100 years he says but you would be in bondage for 70 years and for 70 years they were displaced their, temp their temples were turned to rubbish they had nowhere to worship they were in Babylonian captivity they had to worship God while under bondage but then here comes Zechariah the Lord remembers uh, here comes Zechariah the Lord recalls and he says I'm remembering now that I told the children of Israel you would only be in bondage for 70 years and on the 70th year the Lord remembers through the prophetic voice of Zechariah and Zechariah rises up to declare freedom to the people of God I wish I had time on this afternoon because if I had time I would walk you through the eight visions that God gives Zechariah he gives him eight visions amen to declare to the people of God while they're in Babylonian captivity uh, one vision if you will in chapter one Zechariah is sleeping in his room and while he's sleeping in his room uh, theologians would suggest that he's in a high place and he's in like an attic of some sort and he's sleeping in his room and while he's sleeping there the angel wakes him up and he beckons Zechariah to a window of some sort. Zechariah comes to the window and he says, what do you see? Uh, Zechariah looks out and he says, I see three horses, one white, one red, and one brown. He says, and I'm looking at these horses, and these horses, they're not riding in the mountain. These horses, they're not riding in the valley, but these horses are riding in the ravine. He says, and the one on the red horse is not riding sitting down but he's riding on the horse astride as if he's looking for something and he's riding in the ravine Ah, God, he's, he's not riding in the mountain. He's not riding in the valley, but he's riding in the ravine. I, I'm down south, and I'm sure a lot of you all know what a ravine is. A ravine is a low place. A ravine is lower than a valley. A ravine is almost the lowest place you can get in. My family is Creole, so we're from the Louisiana area and they taught us that the ravine was the most dangerous place you could fall into because in Louisiana the only thing in the ravine is alligators and snakes and a bad beast that would eat you and consume you if you fell in the ravine they often thought you were left for dead here is Zachariah remembering that the children of Israel are in bondage and in him remembering he sees three horses one red in front one brown to the right and one white to the left riding in the ravine hallelujah and the one in the red on the red horse he's, he's riding as if he's looking for something he actually 
asks the angel, what does this mean? He says, well, Zechariah, he says, the Lord put the children of Israel in bondage. And since he put the children of Israel in bondage, after 70 years, the vision you are seeing is the Lord riding not in the mountain, not in the valley, but in the lowest place of the earth. And the reason the Lord is riding in the low place is because God is looking for his people that have found themselves in the lowest place they could ever be in. Come here church. Let me put this in your soup while I'm in your kitchen and tell you that church folk may drop you when you get in the low place. Hallelujah to God. Your prayer partner may drop you when you get in the low place. The prophet may not prophesy to you when you get in the low place. Oh, but I thank God tonight that we serve the type of God who's not just the God of the mountain. He's not just the God of the valley, but he's the God of the low place. I don't care how low you get, he'll ride on his red horse, which is the warring horse, and he'll find you at the lowest of low. Oh, you want to help me preach in here on this afternoon and look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you serve a God who still loves you at your lowest. You serve a God who will still keep you at your lowest. You serve a God who will still pull you out at your lowest. You can never get so low where he will ride and find you and pull you out of what you're going. You ought to help me and you ought to just yank on somebody next to you and say, neighbor, be encouraged because the God you serve, he'll find you in the low place. He'll pull you out of the low place. He'll deliver you in the low place. Right on, King Jesus. Let no man hinder thee. Oh, you want to help me have church and just encourage somebody and tell them he'll find you in the... He'll find you in the low place. He'll... He's a low place God. I, I know they told you he's a mountaintop God and he is. Oh, but I thank God he's a low place God. Grace says I won't give up on you. I know you made mistakes. I know you did stuff you weren't supposed to do. I know you've been places you weren't supposed to be. I know you went with people you weren't supposed to go with. But I thank God that when people drop you, he'll find you where you dropped. He'll find you where you fell. He'll find you where you was broken. Lord, who am I preaching to in here? I want to encourage somebody and tell you, don't give up in the low place because he ain't gave up on you. Don't throw in the towel in the low place because he ain't gave up on you. I don't care what they say. You keep coming to church and praise him in the low place. Glorify him in the low place. Lift him in the low place because I might be low now but I serve the type of God that'll pick me up turn me around and place my feet on a solid foundation I didn't come for a whole lot of you but if you know you serve the God of low places I dare you throw your head back and shout because he's a God who ride in the low place he he has eight visions he he comes to find the people and uh, he comes to find them and to deliver them I, I wish I had time I, I really do he he gives him four visions uh, but here amen on this afternoon I don't come to deal with vision number one I don't come to deal with vision number two three or four I want to deal with vision number five in this vision number five the text would suggest that Zechariah had heard the angel give him vision after vision. Uh, the angel had kept showing Zechariah, amen, vision after vision. And the Bible would declare to us, amen, as you see the opening.
opening of the text in chapter 4 that it looks like Zechariah is almost being wooed to sleep through the visions of the angel and the angel almost has to shock him and wake him and shake him and say hold on Zach I need you to see what it is I'm trying to say to you and he begins to give him another vision he begins to speak to him while Zechariah has seemingly grown weary in his demeanor he says Zechariah do you see what I see Zechariah looks out and he says yeah he says I see a candlestick that looks something like a candelabra I know they don't do this anymore but back when I was growing up they used to have weddings when they would have weddings they would amen have you come down the aisle and light the candles I got a few witnesses I know y'all doing sand and all that kind of stuff now amen glory to God but they would light the candlesticks on the candelabra but this candelabra seemed to be a little large it was a depiction of a large candelabra and this candelabra had a bowl connected to it that had hoses connected to the bowl but what was crazy is not only were there hoses connected to the bowl that seemingly kind of set adjacent or a little bit above the candelabra but the bowl had hoses connected to two olive trees one olive tree to the left and another olive tree to the right the angel yes sir Jesus the angel asked Zachariah he says do you know what it is you're looking at and if Zachariah is the priest um, that I think he is I'm sure Zachariah is thinking like I'm thinking amen I'm sure he's thinking about the candelabra that's in the holy place for you know my brothers and sisters amen in the temple or the tabernacle there is the outer court there is the inner court and there is the holies of holies or the most holy place in that place there was only one light amen in the inner court right before the holy holies of holies in that place that was the table of showbread and there were other articles there but one of the most important things that was in there amen was the candelabra and in that candelabra there was a bowl connected to it and the bible says that Moses tells the priest that it's your job to make sure whatever happens that there's always oil in the bowl and I because as long as there's oil in the bowl the lamp will stay lit y'all don't want to have church with me in here hallelujah so he tells him he says Zachariah do you know what these things mean so I'm sure Zachariah in his priestly prophetic mind his mind is going back to the candelabra amen that is in uh, the temple uh, he looks amen at the angel uh, and the angel says are you understanding what these things are Zacharias looking at him says I don't understand uh, uh, what this candelabra and this olive tree and this oil and a bowl I don't know what this means with the temple and the inner court and the outer court and the holy place I don't know what it is you're trying to tell me and the bible says that the angel began, yeah, yes sir, I feel like something getting ready to break off up in here today. Lord, I hope you're ready. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I hope you're ready for what God getting ready to do in this afternoon, sir. Uh, the angel uh, then began to reveal to him uh, uh, what this vision meant uh, he begins to talk to him in the latter clause of the text uh, and he says to him that this vision is about Zerubbabel 
Zerubbabel, my brothers and sisters, uh, he is, uh, hallelujah, the offspring of Babylon. He was born while Israel was in exile. He is the grandson of uh, Jehoganiah, my brothers and sisters of Judah. He was the governor, a man that returned to help the people of God get back to the place, a man of freedom. He is through the line of David. Zerubbabel is often identified as the son of Sheatil or the son of Jeconiah. My brothers and sisters, he is the leader. And the issue with Zerubbabel, the reason he's in such a bad place is because even though the people of God have now been delivered from Babylonian exile, the Bible says that Zerubbabel has to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple. Uh, this is the issue with this because it seems like this would be an easy thing to do but you gotta remember that the temple has been in rubbish for 70 years and since it's been in rubbish for 70 years when he goes back to rebuild it he doesn't have what he needs to get the job done the Panda, the Bible says he goes back to rebuild it and everything is left in rubbish he goes back to rebuild it and he doesn't have the particles he doesn't have the resources and he has already laid the foundation but he doesn't have what he needs can I talk to a real church in here has God ever admonished you to do something for him but what he told you to do he didn't give you the help you needed to get it done how in the world are you going to put me in a place to rebuild something and I don't have the money I don't have the help I don't have the particles but you sent me to a dead end you sent me to a place where everything you're requiring of me you never gave me the help I needed to get it done oh God let me encourage you in here it's just like God to put you in a bad spot to do a good work Lord who am I preaching to in here it's just like God to put you at a dead end to bring new life it's just like God to leave you with nothing and nobody to do the work that God has called you to do Lord who am I preaching to in here I need you to encourage your neighbor and say neighbor if the Lord has told you to do something but didn't give you what you needed to do it tell him be encouraged that's how you know it's God because what God is going to do to help you get it done it's not by power nor by might but by my spirit Lord I wish I had a Holy Ghost church in here I just need you to find you a neighbor and rock him a little bit and say neighbor if you ain't got what you need you in a good place because now God has to show up and be the resource he gotta be the money he gotta be the breakthrough he gotta be oh I need a real church here somebody who knows that in this next season Everything I need to get it done. I ain't gonna need man or money to do it. God is gonna open the door. Woo, summer. I need you to help me and encourage your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't be, don't be discouraged. I tell him, you're going you're gonna to get it done. Sometimes God has to remove man out the equation so that when it's all said and done, you won't give man the glory. When it's all said and done, you won't glorify the bank. When it's all said and done, you can say, ain't nobody did this but God. Let me teach you your response when you come out of this to God be the glory oh if your neighbor ain't got that kind of response you better move your seat right now but look at him and say neighbor you better practice in this 
this next season, your response is to God. I'm going church I promise you Christian I promise the next time we lift up we're going to have church in here today and the Bible says that here was Zerubbabel a griffin he was discouraged he was tired and he makes a declaration to God he says I'm not going no more I'm not going back. I don't want to be embarrassed. I don't want to be shamed. I, uh, I, don't want, I don't want you to put me out there where I don't know what to do. But the, but, but the prophet tells Zerubbabel, what you started, you must finish. Lord, who am I preaching to in here? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Tell him, I don't care what it looks like. Look at them and say, I rebuke procrastination in you. Oh, come on here. Oh, come on here. Come on. Come on. Help me prophesy. Help me. Help me. Come on. Shake your finger in their face and say, I rebuke procrastination in you. I rebuke wavering in you. I rebuke charging God foolishly in you. Tell him the devil is a liar. And look at him with a stern look and shake that index finger in their face and say, What you started. Tell them you better finish it. Oh, come on in here. Oh, glory to God. Don't play with a neighbor. Look at him and tell them, I don't care how it feels. I don't care how it looks. Handa you better finish it. Tell them you got to do it. And tell them you better not be moved. I don't care what people say. You will not procrastinate in this season. Finish the book. Y'all ain't talking to me here. Go back to school and finish the degree. Stop starting and quitting and quitting and starting. No, the devil is a liar. You better finish it. I just need you to get some Holy Ghost. And I just need you to slap somebody high five with your right hand. Because the right hand is the hand of authority. And look at him and say, finish it. You ain't got no choice. Quit making excuses. Quit blaming people. Quit making everybody else fault. It ain't nobody's fault but yours. Holler at them and say, finish it. Uh, yeah, man. I got to close here. I, I held you too long. It's only a noon day. I, I'm getting out of your way. But my brothers and sisters, uh, they told you in my bio I got five kids at home. Five, yes. Five, pray for me. Hallelujah to God. Send me some money. Do something. I have five children at home. And I'll never forget when Brandon Jr. was born. He is the biggest baby uh, that me and my wife have had to date uh, when he finally amen came out the womb uh, he was almost 10 pounds uh, Elder Weems is here she'll tell you I'm sure she remember it my wife was so big uh, when she would sit down her stomach uh, would sit in the middle of her legs uh, she was so big when she would walk through the grocery store uh, she would have to wobble side to side uh, just to carry what was in her and I'll never forget it my wife was in labor for 18 hours we went to that hospital and after her back had broken and she had begun to push him out of the womb I will never forget this because it was one of the scariest moments of my life she had pushed him out but the only thing she had gotten out was the head and I got mamas in here I see y'all y'all already said ooh because the issue with that is this if only the head has come out that means him in transit his neck is being squoze and he could almost die in that position the doctor kept saying to my wife Miss Vivian you must push or you will kill your baby but my wife was laying there limp my wife was laying there ready to quit 
my wife was laying there ready to throw in the towel I, I, I was trying to push her I was doing my best I, I was saying come on baby but she was so weak she was laying there so weak but one of them nurses came in that room and she looked at my wife in the face and she said let me tell you something girl she said this baby is your baby she said what's in you is your baby she said what you got to push is your baby she said Miss Vivian you are too far in the process for us to cut you open she said you are too far in the process for us to do anything else for you she said if this baby is going to come out of you she said the only one who can push it is you she said but if you don't push it this baby you held for nine months is going to die if you don't push all of the pain you suffered through is going to die if you don't push all of the times you had to wobble in the grocery store it ain't gonna be worth it she looked at her and said woman to woman you better put your big girl attitude on and push this baby out y'all I don't know what happened in that moment but my wife she she set up hallelujah and they put her foot in the sternal and that nurse held on to my wife's hand and she yelled at her and said are you ready my wife said yes I am she said well you lock your you lock your chin in your chest and when I say push you better give it everything you got I don't know what happened in that moment but that girl locked her chin in her chest and she began to push until the doctor said I see the shoulders and he said if you can get the shoulders out then the baby's getting ready to come look at your neighbor and help me preach in here and say neighbor what you got in you this is your destiny you ain't got to find neighbor find you one with the Holy Ghost and say neighbor what you got in you is your purpose what you got in you is what God gave you and tell him if you don't push tell him that it will die I dare you grab that neighbor by the hand and with all the strength you got Oh, come on in here, church. I said, grab that neighbor. Grab that neighbor. Grab that neighbor by the hand. And say, neighbor, you got greatness in you. Say, neighbor, you got a destiny in you. Say, neighbor, you got a new level in you. And say, hey, neighbor. If you don't push, then your baby will die. But tell him, not on my watch. I'm going to help you. 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 Until that baby come for. Please. Please. Help that neighbor. And say, poor. Until you get it, push until you possess it, push until you reap what you have sown. I don't know the name who I'm preaching to, but I come by to tell you what you sowed in tears, you go to reap in joy. But the only way you're going to reap it is you got to push until what God gave you, it comes out of you with the victory in hand. Do you hear me today? If you're going to push it, I need you to wave your hand and open your mouth and shout like you already got it. Like it's in your hand. Shout. Like you're getting ready to possess it. Shout. 
Lord, like the Lord is getting ready to pull you to the next level. I got to close. I got to close. I got to close. But before I close today, I stop by to tell you that the Lord is going to help you complete a hard thing. You didn't been to hell and back. They expect you to fail. They expect you to lose. They expect you not to make it. But I come by to prophesy to you and tell you that you're too close to fail now. You're too close to walk in defeat. You're too close to not win in this season. But I come by to tell you that the reason the bone was hooked to the olive tree was to let them know that in this season you won't need man in this season you won't need people but the Lord is getting ready to cancel people out of the equation do you hear me today I need you to look at your neighbor and say neighbor get ready because God he's getting ready to cancel people to cancel people to cancel people to cancel people out of the equation if you know we're going to do it I need you to lift your hand I need you to open your mouth and I need you to praise him because it's not by might it's not by power 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 yeah it's not by might it's not by power, but by my spirit. Save the Lord. If you know I'm right, you need to find fire people and say, Go get it. Yonder the Bohoshia. Five people. Tell them, Go get it. Go get your miracle. Go get it. Go finish the book. Go get it. Open the door. Go get it. Open the business. Go get it. Get your new level. You didn't suffer to nothing. You didn't cry to nothing. You didn't been through nothing. But I come by to encourage you. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed. Yes, if you know glory is coming, open your mouth, wave your hand, shout it out, shout it out, shout it out. Yes, glory is coming, glory is coming. I said glory is on the way. I said glory is on the way. I said glory is on the way. I got to close. I got to close. I got to close. But before I close, do me one favor and connect with your neighbor. Say neighbor. I'm connected with you because I'm going to be your help that the Lord has sent and say neighbor I got one word for where you're going I got one word 
for what God's going to do. I got one word for your next level. Look at him and holler. Push. Y'all don't want to have no church. Push. 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 Yes. Push till you get it. Push till you possess it. Push until the Lord puts it in your hand. I'm closing now. I'm closing my Bible. I'm going to my seat. But I'm looking at you. And you're looking at me. And you're saying, Bishop, you don't understand. They done dog me out. You don't understand. They didn't run my name in the mall. But I come by to tell you, don't worry about it. Go to bed tonight and pull those covers up above your head. Because we've been mighty in doer for the night. But grab your neighbor's hand and tell a neighbor it'll be all. not for everybody but I want you to get out of your seat and go find you somebody who you know really well go find you go find I dare say this find the person you're closest to in the room quick 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 go find them the person you're closest to in the room go find them whoever you're closest to I got that bullshit. Yeah, I feel a breakthrough coming in here. Hold me, I send the bullshit. I feel a shift coming in this room. I feel help here. I said I feel help here. I said I feel help in the room. Ha! Shandala bo ho ho ho.
look at him and say, neighbor, the reason I had to grab your hand is because you know my story. Tell him you know what I've been through. Tell him you know how much I've been waiting on God. Tell him you know how much I need from God. But say, neighbor, I'm connecting with you because I want you to get a good look at me right now. Because tell him it won't be long now. Woo, shut up. Lord, I wish you believed it. Look at him and say, it won't be long now. Tell him, get a good look at me. Lord, we can praise the Lord in here. Tell him, get a good look at me. Tell him, look at me right now. Because tell him it won't be long now. Not sooner or later, but sooner than later. Y'all ain't talking. Hold us. Look at him and tell him sooner than later. God's getting ready to turn this thing around. If you know God's getting ready to do it, I want you to grab that neighbor by the hand. And when I holler Jesus, I want you to go to praise him with everything you got. Are you ready, church? Jesus!
praise him, mother. Praise him, mother. Oh! I felt power in that thing. Young girl, I love a Way. But I want you to see. I want you to see the diploma in your hand. I want you to see the business in your hand. I want you to see the book in your hand. I want you to see the certificate in your hand. Whatever it is, you're looking for God to release. Whatever it is, you're looking for Him to help you complete. I want you to see it. Can you see it? Can you see it? If you know that God's getting ready to release it with everything you have on the inside of you, I want you to open up your mouth and give God a shout like you already got. Shut you up.
take this with you the rest of the year. God is going to help you complete. That's complete. You hear me? Not do. But he's going to help you complete. He's going to help you finish a hard thing. We as church folk often start, but we never finish. Ooh, but I come by to tell somebody, it is, oh God, I, I can't. Oh my shandable ho ho Lord, I wish I could see some of y'all because you're getting ready to go through seasons of completion. He's gonna help you complete it. Shout yes. Just slap five with about three people and tell them it is finished, it is finished, it is finished, it is finished. It is finished. I want to obey the spirit. I want you to return to your seats quickly because I want to obey God and I want to be in protocol. The first thing, I'm going to ask for a seat and then I want to poll the audience for the unsaved. So I want to put this in your spirit before I poll for the unsaved. There's two groups of people that are going to be sowing today. One is going to sow 80 because you know you're getting ready to enter into a new season. But God's getting ready to give you what you need to complete some things. Then there's the other group that's going to sow 50 because you're in completion, but you need favor to finish it. There's two groups of people. But before you move and come, if there's an unbeliever, you haven't been there. Am I in the right house? I don't know. I haven't been down in his name. Do we go down in his name? All right, I'm in the right house. Hallelujah. I just wanted to be sure. I didn't want to be out of order. There you go. Come on. I love it. So if you, if you, if you haven't been saved, you haven't been down, I want you to come. I want you to give your life to Christ. Before we ask for a seed, I want to ask for a soul. Please, if let me tell you, I beg for, I beg for you, I will beg for you, I beg you to come. I ain't never been offered to go to hell, so I ain't going. But I've been invited to heaven many times. If you don't know Jesus, the door of the church is open. Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by, by me." Will you help me fish the audience? And will you look to the left of you and the right of you and ask them, are they saved? Do they know the Lord Jesus Christ? Come on, help me, church. Come on, go fishing with me. Look at them, ask them, are you saved? And if they say no, I want you to take time and beg them to get saved. Tell them, I beg you to meet them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord, he is, he's good. He's good. He's good. You got someone that don't know him, bring them to me. Bring them to me. Bring them to me. Bring them to me. Y'all stop coming to church empty handed. Bring a soul with you. Hey, shouldn't be us four no more. I want God to save, even in convocation. I die. God, I love you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh. Thank you, Lord. Come on, I'm in the right church. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, thank you, Lord. My soul 
says yes. You're not a man of a host. Oh, come on, where's my church at? My soul says yes. Oh, come on, church. My soul says yes. My soul says yes. Soul says yes. Soul said yes. I need you, Lord. Hey, that's why you clap your hands, church. I need you, Lord. Hey, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Yeah. I need you, Lord, right now. I don't need them tomorrow. Right now. Right now. Right. thing into a press service in a minute. Yes? I won't. You ain't got to hold it. That about that. Yes, sir. that glory was getting ready to hit us in this place. There's an anointing being released. And if you know God's releasing it, I dare you not fight it. And throw your hands up and open your mouth and give him a shout.
Jesus. Come on, help me say it all over the room. I will, I will exalt you. Come on, help me say it in here. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. You are my. Because you're with me, because you're because you're with me, say it, church. and out of obedience to the Spirit. I want to call those two groups of people. Everybody, in, out of a move of God like this, I'm challenging those online and those in this room. Everybody, get one of those seeds in your hand, 80 or 50. If you're sowing 80, I want you to meet me to my left. If you're sowing 50, I want you to meet me to my right. Quickly, quickly fill this altar. Fill this altar. Fill this altar. Fill this altar. We don't have to ask whether or not God is here. Now we're challenging your obedience. Yeah. Oh, I will exalt you. I, I will exalt you. I'm calling. Just come. Come. 80 to my left, 50 to my right. Come quickly. I I want y'all to fill this altar with faith. I will exalt you. Yes, I will. I will exalt you. You are my God. You are my God. I'm waiting on more of you. More of you need to be at this altar. I'm sowing the balance of two. Give me my wallet. I'm sowing 80 plus 50. I will exalt you. Yes, I will. Oh, they help me. I will. I'm sorry, 130. 130. You. You're coming from all over. Get that seed quickly. I, I will exalt you. You are my God. You are my God. Ooh, look at this faith. More of you need to be moving. Because God's getting ready to push some of your desires and some of your dreams. He's getting ready to shift some things in your life. Those who are watching online, I challenge your faith. Hear the word and move by faith. Oh, I will exalt you. Hallelujah. You are my God. You are my God. Because you're with me. Because you're with me. Everybody said because. 
If you didn't have the 50 or the 80, I want you to get your best seed by faith. Get your best seed by faith. Move quickly. Bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. Whatever your best seed, sow on this word. Bless you, sir. I see you. Get your best seed by faith. So my so reveras. Yadabasa. Yes, sang woman of God. I want to make sure everyone had a chance to sow. See, I don't want you to leave this place and not put a seed on what God has released in this atmosphere. I want to make sure you've got everything that God wants to get to you. If you didn't have the 80, if you didn't have the 50, I want you to get your best seed by faith and run it up here and give it out of obedience to God. Come on, mother, I see you. I will. Somebody lift your hands and give him glory. The anointing is here. Yo ya na na mando ya de me ki ya na mansa Aya ya da da si ki ya do do se ya de 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 si Ya da da mando ya de 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 si ka ya da da mando riba basa I speak favor on every seed they're still coming come on I speak increase on every believer those online and in the building that there be no lack in your life but that you live in completion but then you put your hands to, you will complete. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. I will not fear. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you, Apostle. Thank you for allowing me to be here. Thank you. Let's give the Lord a praise in the building. Give the Lord a praise. Give the Lord a praise. Give the Lord a praise. I said, give the Lord a praise. Give the Lord a praise. I want everybody to give the Lord a praise. Everybody in the building. Give the Lord a praise. just got finished hearing an anointed word 
that shifted us into new places. And God is giving us new things for the new day. Look at your neighbor and say, finish it, finish it, finish it, finish it, just finish it. I'm confident of this very thing that he that hath begun a good work in you shall perform it till the day of Jesus Christ. Be grateful today for Bishop Brandon Jacobs. Give God praise for him. Let's do better than that. The man of God has so blessed us with a word that has moved this whole house. From Tuesday night on, God's been moving. In every session, he's been moving. And today, God is saying, he, complete the hard thing. Uh, complete it. Anything that's easy, you're not learning from it. But when it's hard, you got a lesson in it. And we are saying to you, just complete the hard thing. God's going to make it easy for you. Let us say amen. So we're grateful today for Bishop Brandon Jacobs. God used him mightily. And we pray for him. We speak blessings upon his life and peace to his life and anointing to his life that God will go ahead and continue to bless his life and help him to complete the hard thing. Can we say amen? Many of you don't know, but this was a hard thing. God has given us favor to complete the hard thing. Tonight, we're getting ready tonight for the final night of preaching. And tonight, we have a great preacher tonight. Corinthians prophetess Barbara Calloway. Let us say amen. We're a renowned leader, prophetess, and preacher. But tonight, we want you to go home today and get some dinner. And uh, let us come back tonight on time, uh, waiting for the Lord to do a great work. Can we say amen? Everybody say great work. Now I'm going to ask all SOP people to get a vision card. If you don't have one, raise your hand. Someone will come and give it out to you real quick. If you don't have a vision card for the new year, please get it real quick. Everybody raise your hand and get one, please. Uh, you might... Sometime during the year, you need to read what the vision is calling for. God is giving us a kingdom shift. We are being revived. We are setting and we're certainly being restored. Can we say amen? So we bless the Lord today. Any other announcements that we have to get for today? Any other announcements? Any other announcements? All right. Let us remember um, uh, there's some people in our church is going through death and uh, we thank God for brother brother Walker he lost his father and he's still here serving that's dedication and that's commitment we're grateful today this time uh, before we leave Bishop Medlock come speak to us and we're going in the name of the Lord come quickly bless your name Let's clap our hands for Bishop Midler. Praise God. All I have to say, we give honor to God today too, and our chief apostle and all of you. And I just want to say, what a word, what a word. I thank God for being here in this holy convocation. I thank God that I'm here. And I thank him that I'm alive. Amen. I thank him that... He spared me to witness this. And the message was to me today. And I just want you to know that God is saying it. We need to lay everything in his hands, leave it in his hands. We put forth great efforts to do what God has assigned us to do. But that word is great, not by might. And not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And we've come this far, not by any might of ours, or any power that we had. But I thank God for the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ that has brought us to this time. 
And I just want to tell you, in 11 years, I'll be 100 years old. But I'm, I'm encouraging you. If it's one thing, if it's one thing that I wanted to say to you today, whatever you do, don't quit. Whatever you've started, God didn't start you on this journey for you to stop. And my word to you is whatever happens, whatever comes, whatever goes, whatever you run to, run through, run around, or run upon, don't quit. Finish what you started because God is the one that's on your side. And it's not you that will do it. He wouldn't have asked you to do anything if you didn't have the ability to do it. All he wants to know is, can you finish? Are you willing to finish? Because it's not by power, not by might, but by my spirit and by the power and the spirit of the almighty God. I will make it. I'll finish whatever I started. In the name of Jesus. complete it, finish it, finish it, finish it, finish it. And, and, and I'm going to tell you something, it's already finished. Look at your neighbor and tell him it's already finished. I told Bishop Medlock sitting in the office when God created the world in six days, seventh day he rested, everything was finished. Your journey is already finished. Your life is finished. So you might as well give God a praise and stop worrying about it. It's already finished. Well, so. know for the moment we get in our flesh and in our emotions but you got to shake that stuff off of you uh, so you got to shake that stuff off of you and know that my work is already done I'm just walking in the motion of it touch your neighbors I'm just walking in the motion whatever God allows me to get through I'll get through it come on and shout hallelujah so we bless him. All right, we're thankful. Happy to see Bishop Rouse, Bishop J. Elizabeth Rouse. We're happy to see you, Bishop Blunt, Lady Blunt, all of you that haven't been here. Uh, you're looking at some old timers. Hey, Shabba. Hey, thank you. It's all right. It's already finished, so shout about it. Slap your neighbor and tell him shout about it. Stop worrying about it and shout about it. It's already finished. All right. All right. You're praising for it. It's already finished. Just walk through the motion. Just shout about it. Just praise about it. You're
coming out all right. You're going to be all right. your neighbors and the next time you get to a hard thing shout about it just shout about it Tell him yes. Yes to your will. We're trying to let you out of here. We're trying to get you out of here. But I want you to know that it's already finished. You just, you just stop worrying about it. Stop crying about it. And just praise God. And if when you get to the hard thing, it's going to be already fixed.
that is set before us. And I'm grateful for this 28th Holy Convocation. God has met us here in every session and we give him praise and we give him glory because his word has gone forth and it is set forth to accomplish that which is has accomplished and for that we say Lord we thank you it's already finished let us say amen so we're standing all over the building we're going to let you go home and eat your dinner amen because night time is coming and we started today just a little bit late so we want you to go and eat and relax and let's try to be back at 7.30 on time can we say amen Father, we thank you and we praise you and we worship you and we honor you. You're great God above all gods. There's none like you, Father. Oh, None like you, Father. Hallelujah. We bless your name and we honor your name. Thank you for your word today, your power and your spirit that you moved us to another place. And we'll give you the praise for it as we leave this place. God, we pray for traveling mercy. Pray that you would get us our destination safe. Help us to have a good lunch and a good dinner. Bring us back on time tonight. In Jesus' name, to him that is able to keep you from falling, present your fault for the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, the glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Let us all say amen. <laughs>